So let us see a simple animation of Rutherford model. OK, so okay. you you can see the uh, picture, right? Yeah. So this is simple, the animation of the Rutherford model. So from this model, we can see that Rutherford postulated the electrons are separate from nucleus. That palm pudding model uh, Thomson was uh, Thomson postulated that there should be electrons are inside the nucleus because if we see the palm pudding model, if I can search. So. Yeah, it was like this that this is a whole nucleus and in the nucleus there are so small uh, doping or putting of electrons. A Rutherford model obviously different because it told us that it should not be that electrons are inside the uh, nucleus. They are different and they are not inside the nucleus. That was the first postulate. Second one, the feature of Rutherford atomic model that the negatively charged electrons, they revolve around the nucleus in a well-defined orbits. OK, so they are not randomly moving. They are moving well-defined orbit. So that is a very, very particular statement from Rutherford in his model and which is very good, like which is a very physically reliable uh, in the sense. And third one, of its feature of the model feature was that the size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of the atom because there are void space. So here what is written that the Rutherford model was devised by Ernst Rutherford to describe an atom and this model Rutherford, uh, based on his experimental results, new features of relatively high central change concentrated in a very small volume, that is the nucleus, and the rest of the atom and its uh, with its central volume are also containing the bulk of the atomic mass of the uh, atom, and the region is called the nucleus. And experimental basis is that uh, for the alpha particle scattering experiment. And the problem with him, with his model, not with him, that this model don't tell us the stability of the electron because electrons are continuously moving, means they are continuously radiating because according to classical electrodynamics, whenever a charged particle is moving, it should be radiate. It should radiate. It should be radiating. So whenever it is radiating means it will lose its energy, right? And it will lose its energy means it will have less energy, less energy. And after certain time, it will have such less energy that it will collapse into the nucleus. Then what happened with the stability? The atom will be finished. There is no stability. So if you see the uh, drawbacks of Rutherford atomic model. So you see, this is the very specific diagram. If you are asked for this uh, problem with the Rutherford, this is the specific diagram which you should which you should uh, draw during the interview. The sp spiraling of an ac accelerating electron into the nucleus, and this doesn't give us the means of stability. OK. Is it all right? Yes. OK, so what I want to tell you, Rohit, when you are preparing or whenever you, you are preparing. Understand. What is happening? And this is a very simple question yet. You see so many things that we need to tell. We know many things, but we sometimes we miss it because we think that it's okay. The 
the person knows it. But still we have to tell them, no, I also know it. I do know it. Okay, so then Bohr model, how it was, uh, how it was, the problem was overcome. Can you tell me specifically with points? Yes, uh, and the foremost point is how the, at, yeah. Electron yes, move yes. in specified orbits um, uh, where the uh, uh, angular momentum of the electron is integral multiple of the uh, wavelength uh, of the electron. Uh, electron move in those particular orbits and the concept of radiating energy, uh, radiating energy and getting got collapsed down into the nucleus uh, is being cleared here uh, regarding this point. Yeah, so these orbits are called stable orbits, right? Yes, yes, stable orbits. Yeah, so let us go to the Bohr model. Yeah, so I go to the Wikipedia. Sometimes I like Wikipedia because it has very, very nice pictures, diagrams, which I really like it. So if you if you compare the Rutherford model with the Bohr model, you see here this new terms are included it, it, with N. There was nothing N in the Rutherford model. Yes, yes. So this N is the quantization. So what do you mean by quantization? One time quantization means you are you are going to discrete levels, discrete energy levels. So in the Bohr model, the first uh, uh, model of hydrogen atom, it it explained it tried to explain the hydrogen model, hydrogen atom model, basically because there's a only one particle in the nucleus and one electron moving surrounding it. And the basic postulates of Bohr model are that you told. So I want to see if, yeah, the electron is able to revolve in certain stable orbits around the nucleus. And when you are considering the stable orbit, that means that it is not radiating any energy. Means that it is contract contradictory to the classical mechanism because electrons are here not radiating any energy when they are in the stable orbit and these stable orbits are called stationary orbits and they only can attain certain discrete states or certain discrete distances from the nucleus and there should not be any electron in between these two orbits any two orbits and the stationary orbits there should be they should be follow they should follow some particular discretization rule, which is the in terms of the angular momentum of the revolving electron. And that should be MVR equals to NH cross. And this N is called the principal quantum number. And if an electron in its lowest orbit, it can go to no closer to the nucleus because it is in its lowest orbit and it will remain in the lowest orbit. It will not jump to the nucleus unless until some nuclear phenomena of uh, electron capture. That is completely separate thing. But for hydrogen like atoms, they will be only those allowed orbits, the electrons. And these orbits are associated with diff defined energies with their different energy levels and electron can only gain or lose energy by jumping from one energy level orbit to the another orbit by radiating a, or absorbing a specific frequency new which is determined by the energy level difference delta e that is e2 minus e1 where e2 is the highest excited orbit energy and e1 is the the lowest uh, other uh, the lower one so if electron gets this amount of energy, then only it can jump to the other orbit. Otherwise, it will not go to jump. So these are the basic postulates. So it gives us many more things. It has it has the essence of quantization. It has essence of contradiction to the classical mechanics that it will not radiate any energy if it is in the stable or stationary state. 
and it has given a contradiction with respect to the radius it of the electron it is quantized it gives us energy levels they are quantized it gives us velocity they are quantized it has given many more things which classical mechanics does not allow okay so yeah and this is a nice diagram the for the hydrogen atom for the helium for neon and lithium And also there are some uh, terms like alpha fine stru constant structure and then some of the problem with the previous Bohr model. Bohr also justified it uh, uh, from like first it uh, how the Bohr model derived the energy levels, you know about the derivation, right? That what you have uh, what he has done that he has taken electron is uh, uh, completing a circular orbit by electrostatic attraction with the nucleus surrounding nucleus or centered nucleus so there should be attraction uh, coulombic interaction between them since electron is a negative and uh, nucleus is a positive so there should be the interaction of electrostatic attraction and since it is moving revolving around the nucleus so there should be centripetal force and the balance can be only achieved if the coulombic attraction is equal to the centripetal force so m v square by r should be z k e square by r so z is the atomic number here uh, uh, atomic uh, and uh, k e is the elementary charge that is uh, here it is written as k e so k e is the coulombic constant and e into e is the uh, elementary charge e for one for electron and another for the nucleus so you can also so have some other uh, Z for in terms of Z, suppose something other uh, symbol can be used here also. K, K can be also other symbol, so no problem. And from here you can see uh, that you have to put this quantization rule MVR equals to NH cross and then you will get uh, discrete energies, discrete radius, this value of Rn that is, it is very important value of R that is the orbit orbit radius allowed orbit radius and allowed energy e that is minus 13.6 z square by n square in electron volt so the half for the hydrogen atom n equals to one then the ground state energy is minus 13.6 electron volt but some of the problem with the uh, with the model that it couldn't explain many more uh, fine structure constant it couldn't uh, it couldn't explain it specifically then what board did that instead of thinking that electrons have the lightest mass and nucleus is infinitely heavy that it is not moving then he corrected it that nucleus cannot be infinitely heavy it should have some momentum and it cannot be since it nucleus is not infinitely heavy so it is not in stationary it is also moving so electrons and nucleus both are moving with respect to a center of mass so instead of taking m only here for the, this is uh, mv square by nucleus so instead of me he used mu for reduced mass at a later time to act this one the Bohr formula then used redu reduced mass of electron and proton and instead of me he used me mp by me plus mp and then he find find out the energy level for other uh, uh, positron positronium and other um, other atoms so things are changing and also there is a very uh, Rydberg formula came. It is very excellent formula for giving us the understanding of uh, different energy levels and the amount of radiation, wavelength of radiation from a particular orbit to another orbit. So Mosley law is the X-ray X-ray in terms of X-ray. Uh, it came uh, for from also following the quantize, quantization rule. But the shortcomings of Bohr model that it had some difficulty. 
in explaining Bohr model, uh, in explaining the hydrogen atom problem or any other hydrogen like atom problems because the much of the spectra of larger atoms, if you not confined to hydrogen atom, if you go to larger atoms, then you will see that there are not only one particular energy level associated for one transition. It not only a one level that this uh, hydrogen, uh, like for Bohr model, there is one nucleus inside uh, uh, in the center and there are different electrons are moving outside uh, a particular orbit. It. and each orbit has discrete energy level e1 e2 e3 e4 so if there is a transition from e3 to e2 we should get a one particular lambda if there is a transition between e3 to um, e, uh, e2 to e1 there should we on only get one particular spectral line but it is not the observed case if you see if you record the spectrum of a uh, atom suppose the atom is not hydrogen atom it is a, a more complex atom like it is made from it is made of more electrons then it is not the case you will see several spectral lines associated with a particular transition so what is the reason between uh, behind that why this energy levels how these energy levels are coming split split in the energy levels are coming if there is only one energy level then we should only observe one lambda instead of having lambda one lambda two lambda three so this cannot be explained by Bohr model another one is that the relative intensities of spectral lines it also cannot be explained by Bohr model and yes, the existence of fine structure of uh, spectral lines and hyper fine structures of spectral lines, those cannot be explained by, from Bohr model. The Zeeman effect cannot be explained. Zeeman effect is that if you apply external magnetic field, you will see there is a changes in the spectral lines. Now changing in the spectral lines means you change in the electronic energy levels. That's why you are seeing in terms of spectra. So, which is related to the spin and orbital ang angular momentum. That time it was not there. The spin of the electron was not known to Bohr, was not discovered. He only thought about the linear angular, orbital angular momentum. And the model also violates the uncertainty principle because it also considered there are certain locations, known orbits, known location of electrons. So, uh, you can but it should not be there. You cannot observe measure simultaneously the location and orbits of the electrons due to uncertainty principle. And uh, different uh, things like doublet, triplets, sodium doublet lines, why it is arriving, triplet lines of uh, cadmium, why it is uh, here. Uh, electron atoms so this were the problem with the Bohr model everything is clear up to now yes it's clear okay so now how the things was changed the things were changed uh, not so much but up till certain extent with the Bohr summer model so what was the main assumption here the model postulate is that instead of only thinking that the electrons are revolving around the nucleus with a circular orbit, let us consider it is, a, is an elliptical orbit. So electron travels in elliptical orbit around the nucleus instead of Bohr's model of circular orbits. And then when you consider the electrons are revolving in an elliptical orbit, you have to specify two different quantization because it is not only dependent on R, but it is also dependent on theta. So that is the azimuthal quantum number. Restricting the motion of the electron in two ways, one with the radial part, muthal part. So in Bohr Summerfield model, you will get two different quantum conditions. One is MBR equals to NH cross, and another is that uh, for the 
uh, for the MVR of radial part and another is MVR of theta part. So this th 